الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as Allah سبحانه وتعالى described him in the Quran رحمة للعالمين. He was a mercy to all of mankind. A mercy to all of mankind. And this even included his family. So most of the time when we think about being merciful to people, we tend to think about people on the outside, outside of the home. And the people that are most deserving of your mercy are the people that are closest to you, meaning your wife, your husband, and your children. The people that you lay your head down next to every night. The people that you see every day on a daily basis and spend time with. These are the people that are most deserving of our mercy. And a lot of times when we think of mercy, we tend to think of the outside world, at work, with our colleagues, with our friends, that we, are, we, we show the most tolerance and the most patience and the most mercy with people that are outside of our homes than we do with the people that deserve it the most inside of our homes. So I just want to give us a glimpse of the mercy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his family. دخل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على الصفية وكان تبكي. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم entered the house of Safiya and he found her crying. Can you imagine you come home from a long day of work and you open your door and your wife is sitting in the living room on the couch with her face buried in her hands crying. Anything that transpired prior to that is irrelevant. And the Prophet ﷺ came to her and asked her, Wamabiki, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And she said, Hafsa, in the Hafsa, Qalat, Anni ibn Yahudiya. She said, Hafsa, who was her co wife in the relationship, the daughter of Umar ibn al-Khattab She said, Hafsa said that I was the daughter of a Jew. As Safiya was a Jewish woman who converted to Islam and the Prophet ﷺ married her. But even coming into Islam from a different faith, she was met with some resistance from the people that should have been the closest to her who were her co-wives. Nonetheless, women, they have the jealousy that is between them sometimes that makes them insensitive to people's individual situation. Sometimes women can be very insensitive when their emotions and their jealousy gets involved. And they tend to forget that when a person comes into a situation like that, they're very vulnerable. When a person comes into Islam, they're very vulnerable because we know their past, where they came from. And it makes them very vulnerable. We can see clearly through them. And to bring up someone's past in their face or behind their backs is something that is totally inappropriate in Islam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave us for anything that we did in the past. And we're not accountable for how we were born and the families that we were born in and raised in. That wasn't in our control. So she said, Hafsa said that I was the daughter of a Jew. Listen to how the Prophet ﷺ built her back up. He said, Yes, Safiya, Inna ki la ibna ta nabi, wa inna amma ki nabi, wa inna ki tahta nabi, fa bima taftakhiru alayki. He said, Safiya, you are the daughter of a prophet. Meaning, Prophet Musa السلام, who was the prophet of Bani Israel, the prophet of the Jews. He said, you are the daughter of a prophet. Your uncle was a prophet, meaning Harun. He said, and you are married to a prophet. So what does any woman have that is greater than that that they can brag about? Subhanallah, built her up, 
someone sometimes, due to people's insensitivity, they break us down. And it is the responsibility of our spouses to build us back up. In our homes, that is the one place out of all of the other places in the dunya that we should feel like kings and queens as husbands and wives. Our homes should be places of safety, places of security, places of mercy, places of compassion, places of patience, patience, places where we get the most of those things out of anywhere else in the dunya. But can you imagine some homes where there is intolerance, some homes where there is no patience, some homes where there is no mercy, some homes where there is no concern or compassion, homes where men and women feel like they are captives or prisoners in their own homes. People literally walk on eggshells in their own homes. People are literally in fear in their own homes. No one should have to live like that. No one should have to live like that in their own home. A man should not have to walk on eggshells in his own home out of fear that every word that comes out of his mouth, his wife takes to the extreme and over exaggerates and makes more than what it is. So much so that he's in fear of saying anything in his own home. No one should have to live like that. No woman should have to live in fear that if I say the wrong thing to my husband, he's going to divorce me. If I say the wrong thing to my husband, he's going to hit me physically. No one should live in that type of fear in their own home. Our homes should be places of compassion and mercy. Our spouses should be people who lift us up, build us up when other people break us down. When the Prophet Sallallahu saw Andrew Jibreel السلام, for the first time, just like anyone seeing anything like that for the first time in their lives, he was horrified. Horrified. He said, when I looked up, I saw Jibreel. He took up all of the space in the sky, in the horizon. I couldn't see any sky. Can you imagine looking up and you see this being with wings looking at you, talking to you? I'm in fear just imagining what that looks like. The Prophet Wasallam said the different, the distance between one, one wing of an angel, the angels have 500 wings. And the distance between one wing to another wing is like the distance of 70 years on the fastest riding animal. That's the distance from one wing to another wing. Can you imagine looking up in the sky and seeing this creature taking up the whole space? Terrifying. And then Jibreel grabbed him and squeezed him and let him go and told him Iqra to do something the Prophet Sallallahu wasn't even accustomed to doing. Read. He was unlettered. He said, Ma ana biqari. I'm not, I don't know how to read. You're commanding me to do something that I don't know how to do. And then where did he run home to? He didn't run to Abu Bakr. He didn't run to Abu Bakr who was his best friend, long time friend. He didn't run to Abdurrahman ibn Awf, long time friend. He didn't run to anyone. He ran home to his wife, the one person that could build him back up after he's been broken. He ran home to Khadija. And he said, Inni akhafu ala nafsi anna yukhzini. He said, I fear for myself that this is Allah humiliating me. I'm going crazy. I just saw something. There's no way in the world that it could possibly be reality. I'm going crazy. Allah is humiliating me. And Khadija anha, she stood up, she said, Kalla wallahi. She said, no, I swear by Allah, Allah will never humiliate someone like you. You feed the poor. You take on responsibilities that are not yours. You cater to uh, your guests. You take care of this. You're trustworthy. You're honest. And start mentioning all of his good qualities. Build him, building him back up. With every quality she mentioned, she was building him back up. Your spouse should be the one person that you should never be in fear of. Your spouse should be the one person that builds you back up after someone else breaks you. And this is what Khadija did. She built, she built him back up after the situation almost broke him. The same way that the Prophet ﷺ extended this to Safiya when Hafsa's comment broke her. She said that she said that I was the daughter of a Jew. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Oh Safiya, that your father, your, your, your father was a Jew. 
your father was your you were your father was a prophet Musa not that Musa was her father but the father of Bani Israel the the, the prophet of Bani Israel your 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 father your your, your you were your, your father was a prophet your uncle was a prophet and you are married to a prophet what does anyone have over you that they can brag about la ilaha illallah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with mercy and compassion to the ones that love us the most and the ones that we love the most. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.